You're listening to Marketing with Vani, in which I speak to marketing gurus. Together, we decode how marketing works in the real world to grow your business. I must get sales going, but I don't have the money to spend on advertising, or I have very little money. In comes performance marketing with the promise of transparent ROI. How does performance marketing work? What is the science to cracking the formula? How can one make it work harder? For all of these questions, I have three speakers on this episode. Shankar Prasad, founder Plum Beauty. Plum was amongst India's first clean and vegan beauty brand. Next, I have Shashank Mehta, who started the whole truth, and he audaciously brings all good, no preservatives, no baddies into his bars and muesli. And both Shankar and Shashank, by the way, are also ex Unilever, as am I. And finally, my last speaker on this episode is Shubho Sen Gupta, a digital marketer with long years in advertising and currently working with the government on many different projects. So let's start with Shankar. He equates performance marketing to arbitrage. In this basic level, performance marketing is money, spend money, get sales. As opposed to spend money, raise awareness, someday they will come and buy from you. Uh, you know, you to spend money and hope they will come and buy from you. Performance marketing is spend money, have they bought from me or not? If they have not bought from me, shut off that campaign. Uh, very simply. Now, that can take the form, typically it takes the form of either Facebook and Instagram ads or Google ads. Uh, Google has various placements and various ways to do it and whatever, whatever. It's a portion in itself. So, those are the primary two modes of performance marketing. Of course, there are on platform channels like AMS on Amazon or there are other marketplaces which are developing their own proprietary performance marketing uh, you know tools on their own platforms which are channel specific but in essence it is really that i mean how much are you going to make for every dollar that you spend on advertising of course we started from day one with performance marketing because we are an internet first brand and we started with our brand website first and it continues to be a large part of our spend what we have increasingly realized is that and performance marketing works basis auction and or arbitrage. It's a perfect market out there, or they're at least trying to create a perfect market out there. If I'm targeting 25 to 30 year olds living in cities and you know having an affinity for beauty, so are maybe 200 other people in the market, including retailers and brands. So therefore, you have to compete for real estate there. And when whenever there is a market, the winners are those who are able to create arbitrages. And arbitrage opportunities are not permanent, they are temporary. So most of the game in performance marketing ends up being chasing arbitrage opportunities. What works today won't work tomorrow. So you will feel very happy, you will gush about how much you were able to bring down the cost of customer acquisition on, on one day, but you will be eating humble pie the next day. So, Absolutely. I've heard a lot of entrepreneurs say that putting campaigns seem to have hit a ceiling now and we correct. don't know why it's not working yeah. anymore. Yes. So that's what happens. You've been lucky to find that arbitrage on that particular day, but nobody else was chasing that segment. And maybe you found the right cohort of customers there, thanks to some quirk of the algorithm. And you are a slave to the algorithm. So if the algorithm decides that your ad is not worth showing, they'll just raise the CPM for your ads. And Is there a formula to beating it? There isn't. So it's, as any arbitrager will tell you, there is a method to the madness. Of course, I'm not saying it's all arbitrary and random. It is important. I'm not just saying it helps. It's actually important, essential to be well structured mm. and to have the basics right. But the basics is not what is going to give you outside returns. Because everybody is getting their basics right. Mm. So in a perfect market, how do you create value? You create value only when you buy something, you know, at a lower cost than what other people are paying for it. Right? Or you are able to do more with what you buy than what other people are able to do, which is sort of increasing conversion rate and increasing basket size on your website and so on and so forth right so you there is no formula to arbitraging if there was the arbitrage won't exist everybody right. will figure out the arbitrage and the arbitrage goes away so mm -hmm. a large part of performance marketing i would say almost 40 50 percent of performance marketing is setting yourself up to find newer and newer arbitrages as time passes uh, very few people articulate it this way but that's, this is what i've learned over so many years of doing and observing performance marketing that set yourself mm. up 
the only system you need to set is a system to continuously mine arbitrage opportunities and give them to you not all of them will work some of them will work some of them will fall flat you need to develop that capability to spot and run and scale arbitrages quickly and dump them when they stop working and move on so this system is what you need in place and have you got it in place do you feel you're sweating it out to <laughs> the best <laughs> no no we aren't i mean so there is never a perfect i think we personally speaking are quite far from having the perfect system that finds the arbitrage i would rate ourselves like a 5 or a 6 on 10 on this there is a long way to to get to this seems to be a bit of a black box what does a founder do i mean beyond a point in the initial stages it's very important to get traction right at the end of the right. day if you don't have business traction you don't attract money from investors so i've right. got to show that right. look what i am getting sales what would you recommend if you had to come on the other side of the table what would you recommend a founder to do <laughs> to address the pitfalls of performance marketing beyond the stage so i think the performance marketing is no panacea and because it operates in a so supply demand driven market you are not going to be able to create extreme levels of value out of it from the right from the word go or even consistently day in day out there are going to be days when the market beats you there are the days when you will beat the market the trick therefore is to use it as part of the funnel and not the entire funnel do a lot more to one's own capacity and one's own ability lot more on the top of the funnel and use performance marketing to just make sure that funnel is not leaky at the bottom and that funnel is sort of running like a well oiled machine at the bottom so it's important to get the top and the middle right in one zone ways mm-hmm. and as you evolve as a brand your top of funnel will change to the ultimate top of funnel which is tv advertising billboards with celebrity and whatever is the last brand do so 30000 feet top of the funnel but there is lots yeah. more layers to top of the funnel that you can do in the interim and if you try to run a bottom of the funnel operation without getting a top of funnel right it's always Correct. going to be highly frictional which means that the role of the quality of messaging or the insights that you have on the consumer cannot be overstated not at all it's a perfect market or at least it's a highly competed competition driven market and therefore is close to being a perfect market you are not going to be able to create insane value through only performance marketing Mm, fabulous that's just what i wanted to hear next i have shashank of the whole truth and he talks about brand building versus performance marketing and how the two must tango you come from the world of unilever so i know that you and i would speak the same language and we both been trained in the fundamental principles of what makes good marketing Uh, how did you combine the traditional principles of what we've learned at unilever with performance marketing to create this brand called the whole truth so what worked for you what did you learn along the way tell us everything sure so uh, of course i think we are very very young and still learning but i can share what we are trying to do and but i still think it's a journey thinking from first principles ideally as a content first brand which has a very very strong philosophy of why it exists i want you to hear about the brand before you try the product my ideal consumer journey is you see some of our content see some of what we do on youtube or instagram or in a hundred other places etc have a favorable opinion of yes these are good guys and then get to the product and then once the product wows you then i have you for life what that means in terms of marketing is i want my content and brand building to reach you before my performance marketing reaches you performance marketing is really really important in a can i interrupt you here shashank sure. made a very very important point it's a very crucial point you said i want you to hear about me before you try me now yeah. your food product and i would yeah. imagine that you're saying this because we first taste with our brains yeah absolutely so i think everything changes with context right it's again that example of i can give you a michelin star food bowl but if there is you know if you're eating it with the smell of a toilet near you you will not have the michelin star experience i want to build the context of why this thing exists and why it is important for food to get sold 
because you know as a human race we've screwed ourselves over in the last 100 years post industrialization with the shit that we put in our food before you bite into the product and go hmm this is great right and hence how that converts into business is i want my content and brand building to reach you first and then as a reminder medium or as a salient feature reminder medium or as a short crisp version of the story that i was telling you in detail when you heard my content i want my performance marketing to reach you because i'm now bringing you further down in the funnel and i'm now asking you to complete the loop of doing the commerce with me also but again in the first interaction with you i don't want to be pushing for commerce i don't want to come across as a you know salesy guy who's in your face saying kharido 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 i want you to first feel that i'm out to do some service which is true that is what we're out to do and hey if you feel good about what you're doing if you think this is a worthy mission by the way we make these great products which live up to our own philosophy otherwise we wouldn't put them out would you mind trying them that second bit is the job of performance marketing the first bit is the job of brand building and i think uh, the unilevers of the world do brand building brilliantly but they don't understand performance marketing most B2C brands do performance marketing brilliantly, but they don't have the resource, I guess, initially to put into brand building. It's been tough for us too because when you are money constrained and resource constrained, it's really tough to put money into non-direct revenue generating stuff. But again, I guess that's where the conviction matters that that this is the right thing to do, and hence uh, we must do it. And finally, I have Shubho Sen Gupta. he talks about the importance of keeping in mind the traditional principles of marketing while crafting the performance marketing campaign and how one must think about the full marketing funnel how does one make performance marketing perform better yeah that's a great question and the carcasses carcasses that i see along the performance marketing highway I tell a very clear story which is people think performance marketing is atm marketing as in you put in 100 rupees and you get 100 clicks you know that sort of thing yeah and it never works because at the end of the day you've got to go back to your marketing funnel i mean whether it's a traditional funnel or the inverted funnel or whatever it doesn't have to be linear but it has to be different steps you know there is awareness and you could say you know it can't be pure awareness like i don't want to do a tv kind of approach i want some action so awareness can have action also awareness engagement influencer marketing so there are many different things you know you can't just press a button and get a lot of excel sheet clicks people do that and people i mean there are some agencies you know marketers who make a very good living out of that and hats off to them but you know it, it, at the end of the day it's a very short term kind of approach because it boils down to who can get the cheaper clicks that doesn't work i respect people's ability to do that but doesn't work you have to at the end put in older brand values and i'm not saying do exactly what you are doing on tv or print or radio or whatever but you have to build relationships you have to bring you know what we were discussing yesterday bring some value a value could be a transactional value value can also be an emotional value badge value swag value whatever you call it so it cannot just be oh you know this guy is giving 16% off let's go click right it never works you know coming back to the world of performance marketing tell me shubhu how does one make sense of the numbers broadly see i mean there are some startup basics which are very good which have been arrived at over the years i mean your cost per acquisition for example when i was doing the startup thing 5 6 years back and we were constantly failing we realized we didn't have a cost per clear you know logical cost per acquisition on which we based our entire campaign on right we were chasing the wrong metrics like you know cost per view and stuff like that okay it depends from brand to brand category to category budget goals etc but there has to be one golden metric that you've got to pin down your campaign to and you know build your entire campaign ecosystem around that and of course you know you kind of keep a regular check on what's the line and so on so would you say that in a performance marketing campaign one should have what you call the one golden metric be clear about what is that one metric that you should follow 
Yeah, for startups, the one single metric is very, I mean, it keeps changing, of course. There is no one, you know, cast in stone. Exactly. It could also depend on what business you have. No, It could be the number of downloads or it could be the number of new users I acquire. It could be the number of uh, what else? It could be for a travel company, for example, what would it be? It could be some in- interest, you know, downloading, opening a form, many different things, right? Exactly, exactly. So one has to first figure what is that one golden metric, as you call it, that would make sense for me to chase. And that is that one golden metric that perhaps I also report to my investors that I also keep as a measure for my own self to say that if I were to do well on this one metric, then everything else will fall in its place.